dear viewers, this is it, the final episode of Zombie Land Saga. Is this series going to end with a bang? Or is it just kind of fizzle out? Everything depends on this episode. It's been an amazing ride so far. Um, I've really enjoyed the series, even though, to be fair, there were some more average episodes than the good ones. But the good ones, oh, I absolutely love it. And overall, I, I've really enjoyed this series, and I'm sure a lot of you too. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be watching this reaction right now, right? So you're obviously a fan of this series. But as I talked about in my last episode's review, I have some very deep concerns on how they are going to end this season. Uh, especially considering there's only one episode left, which we're about to see. And yet there are so many questions, so many loose ends that are still unanswered, right? <laughs> like, who exactly is Kotaro? Uh, what does Sakura have to do with everything? What exactly is this Zombieland Saga project all about? Uh, so many things. And I don't think they can fit all this information into this one final episode. Because we know for a fact, at least, there has to be a lie. Okay, it, sorry, it's not fact, but... I'm 99.9% .9 sure that there's going to be a final performance, right? So you need to leave time for that. And you still have to have time for Sakura to regain her memories since she lost her uh, memories of being a zombie last episode. Um, so we still need to go through that whole arc. And then all the, like, what about Yugiri's backstory? What about Tai's backstory? Uh, there's so many questions, and... I really do think that there is no way to build a satisfying conclusion to this series unless they make a second season, which I would be completely down with, right? I, like I said, I really enjoyed this series. I wish there were more, and here's hoping that they do go the, the route where they announce another season. Otherwise, I'd be really, really sad if such a promising series ended on sort of like a fizzle, right? So, yeah, anyways, uh, before we begin, I just want to mention one other thing real quick. So, if you go on YouTube right now, you can actually see Fran Shushu, the voice actors who uh, form up Fran Shushu. They actually pr gave a live performance during the Psy Games Festival of 2018, which was, I guess, maybe a few days or a week ago. Um, so, you can see the live performance of both the opening, uh, Adabana Necromancy, as well as the ending, Hikari A. Uh, I watched both. I think the, the voice actors were a little nervous, so they didn't give their best performance. Uh, they have another live concert scheduled for March next year, so I assume by that time they'd be much more comfortable singing and dancing, uh, much less nervous, and can give a better performance. But in any case, if any of you guys are interested, you can just go on YouTube and there are some fan camps or recordings of the event. So, anyways, I am your host Maverick, you're watching Musings of Maverick, let's get this show on the road. So, let us begin in 3, 2, 1, go. Don't disappoint me, Zombieland Saga. You haven't disappointed me so far. Yeah, we have sulky, gloomy Sakura right now. Of course, we learned more about her backstory uh, last episode, where she is basically like one of the most unluckiest people in the world. Why, though? What is your motive, Kotaro? I want to know! Okay, a call back to the first episode? お前も<笑> 
this is Eyes and Junko song. Her body remembers it? Yeah. Oh, she's slowly regaining her memories? <laughs> Does she have memories of flying out? Aww. Hi is trying to do the drive in Tori dance. Aww. I seriously hope they at least give us some explanation of why Tide is the way she is. Three days. <laughs> yeah, she just needs a little bit of confidence back in her. Why don't they- they have to have some recordings, right? Just show her that. Like, I seriously think if they just show her, uh, what- how she looked like dancing and singing on stage, she'll just go like, Done. Don't tell me Tai is going to... Mm. 
Okay. So Sakura is probably the only one who thought it was worthwhile to train her. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. だから今度は自分が教えてあげようとしたのね。誰かが困っとったりやらかしたりすると真っ先にフォローすんだ。さすがなくせオロオロしてね。私が悩んでいる時、ずっと寄り添ってくれたのも桜ちゃんでした。リ
OMG. Idaho is real life in the face of death. Dang. That was epic. フランシスの本当の電鉄が始まる。ただじゃ死なない。お前らのゾンビ魂がどんぶに見せつけてやらい。ああ。探し城最大の鋼鉄量だったよ。バスも運休してしもうたことですよ。やっとなんのこれも。
It's your solo part, Sakura. サクラハンと一緒のステージで失敗したいと私は失敗したり後悔したりすることを全然ダメだと思わないやろ。お前が持ってるんじゃい。いくらお前が持ってなかろうが、俺が持ってりゃええんじゃい。カモン、サクラ
Again, worst comes to shove, I'll just cut out this entire part. I, hopefully I won't need to. Oh, this is a weird breakdown. Wow, Sakura is the center for both of these songs. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, hi, yo. And so apparently, there's a little bit more after Sakura says good morning. So let's see what this is all about. Now uh, the editor. Okay. Are they going to wrap up his little story? Oh. Oh. And there we have it. The conclusion of Zombie Land Saga. Okay, first things first. This episode nearly completely met my expectations on all the fronts and even blew my expectations away on some other stuff. So let's just, so that's just out the way, right? So it did not turn into a fizzle. They definitely ended with a bang. So let's get that out of the way first. My concerns were not met. They fulfilled the expectations. Good show, good ending, right? So now I'm going to talk a bit more about, you know, as I always do, the review of this episode. Um, it's gonna focus on this episode. I might do a, another review of the entire Zombieland Saga series uh, if I can find a time and if I can find enough topics to fit into uh, a video, basically. But for right now, I'm going to focus on just this episode. So, this episode we can basically divide it into two parts, right? The first part is the uh, convincing Sakura to get out of her slump and get her head in the game, and the second part is the live performance. So, the first half is, you know, essentially, I think it's taking all the tropes of idol anime and then combining it into one. So everything, everything that you would basically expect from an idol anime that deals with this kind of slump or uh, a member who has depression, who is depressed regarding some situation, uh, would have these tropes in them. Like, um... So let's say four parts, right? The first part is the you can do it mentality, right? So like I was screaming at them for the entire time, just show Sakura a recording or whatnot of her actually on stage performing and being loved by fans, show her like the fan meets, how people are glad to meet her. That would work wonders in uh, helping her regain her confidence, right? So it's, it's like letting her know, yes, you can do it because you've done it before. And in this uh, in this episode, they showed it through two different points, right? One is where, when at the fan meet, or actually, sorry, not the fan meet, they were just handing out flyers, but they had fans come up to Sakura and basically tell her, yes, they, they are fans of her, they love to see her perform, so she can, you know, she can know that she's uh, expected upon to give a performance, basically. There are people who are her fans who adore her, and wish the best for her. So that in itself gives her some confidence. And then the second part is they made her dance the moves again. So 
muscle memory, how zombies have muscles, I don't know, but in any ways, she's, her body still remembers all the moves to the dance, and especially because she's already practiced so much by herself, um, she can dance it flawlessly, or at least uh, at a good enough level to, uh, to perform, right? So these two things combined together can give her the confidence back on what is expected of her. So that's the first part. The second part is in regards to a sort of like, uh, you helped me before, so now I'm going to help you kind of trope. So that includes all the girls, basically, because they were all, in one way or another, helped by her. And it, even in this episode, we even specifically see Ty, right? So they didn't show this in the past episodes before, but here we, we know that, okay, Sakura was basically the one who didn't give up on Ty and taught her how to do these moves so the move dance moves or the singing so that she could fit in as a member of Fran Shushu. Uh, and it would make sense, right? Because we had some hints of it in the earlier episodes, but here, okay, we can confirm that Sakura was the one doing most of the teaching to Tai and allowing her to become a competent member of Fran Shushu. So because in the past uh, Sakura was the one helping all the others and helping them overcome their problems. So now they basically say, okay, you helped, you helped us before, now it's our turn to help you and uh, provide competence, provide support, and whatnot to Sakura. Um, although we still didn't get the backstory of Tai, so that was a little bit disappointing. But like I said, it's pretty much impossible to fit all the unanswered questions into this one episode. And so we would require another season, right? But I'll touch on that later. So the third part is uh, regarding Yuguri. So I don't... I, I haven't watched that many idol anime before, and I'm not sure how many people who are, who are watching Zangaland Saga right now are fans of idol anime. But there is a certain trope in idol anime that whenever the main character is down in dumps or depressed or something, it relies on basically a punch by one of the main character's friends to basically uh, punch them awake, in a sense. So they played on this trope a little bit with Yuguri in the previous episodes where she punched or slapped uh, Sakura in episode 3, I believe, and also where she slapped Kotaru in the, I believe it was the last episode or episode 10 episode, yeah, I think it was in episode 10. So, they were kind of playing on that trope by, uh, because in during that time, both Kataro and Sakura managed to get out of the slums and get, and be positive again by themselves, but they made it so that Yuguri didn't listen, didn't listen to them, and decided to just slap them awake anyways. Uh, slap, basically slap some sense into them, even though they already had sense. So here they actually went full out and <laughs> full circle back to what it was before, and that is basically a slap or punch by a close friend of your group or a close friend or, or something, and slap you awake, slap some sense into you, hey, don't be so depressed anymore, be positive, and whatnot. So that was the, the third part, the third trope that they touched upon. And the fourth one was basically I, uh, where she had like a key phrase, a catchphrase, or a idiom. Do it. I'm not sure, what it, what's it called in English? Um, basically a catchphrase, your, your catchphrase. So, uh, because in the past Sakura was motivated by watching one of I's interviews, right? So how she's not afraid of failure because it's always something that you can learn from it and whatnot. So she repeats it again this time, and so it resonates with Sakura. And this is, again, also a trope of idol anime as well. Well, maybe not specifically idol anime, but a lot of anime in general, where you would be motivated by a, a key phrase, basically. Um, so, yeah. That's why in this first uh, in this first half, what all they did in trying to convince Sakura to perform again, they touched on pretty much all of the idol anime tropes. Um, so, for the idol fans out there, this is <laughs> the, that's like 
uh, it's it's expected, right? And for all of you non idol non idol anime fans, uh, or people who don't watch idol anime, you get a dose of what it's normally like when uh, a certain character is experiencing some problems or conflicts. So yeah, that pretty much covers the first half. One little part I also want to mention, and that is they did kind of give a backstory or a hint of the backstory of Kotaru. So we know that his his name was probably not Tatsumi Kotaru before. Um, I believe it's called Sakura called him Inui Inui Kun Inui Kun. So again, not sure if that's his family name or his given name. But any case, it turns out that he was a classmate of Sakura's when she was in high school, right? We know it's in high school because uh, the CD that was dropped was of Iron Frill. The CD that uh, Kotaro handed to Sakura was of Iron Frill. So, not much happened there, right? But I'm basically guessing that probably, and because Sakura called Inoue Kun, so that means that they were probably pretty close, and I'm guessing that Sakura maybe talked to Kotaro a lot about how she was motivated by watching I and Iron Frill, and how she wants to hopefully be an idol someday, and how it gives her uh, her motivation in life. She probably, again, this is just guessing, but I'm assuming that she talked a lot about this to Kotaru, so Kotaru would know what to do in order to help Sakura, basically. And it makes sense that Sakura doesn't recognize him because it's been 10 years since uh, Sakura last saw him. So uh, Sakura died when she was 17, so that means Kotaro is probably seven, uh, 27 or 28 right now, basically. So um, there's that. So we get, finally get some kind of sense of why Kotaro is so persistent in, uh, in regards to Sakura. And we can also basically guess that, yes, he basically put this unit together in order to uh, basically fulfill a fulfill a dream of Sakura's. Although whether he's the complete mastermind behind this or zombies have existed for a long time ago is yet remain to be seen. Right? Is it Kotaro doing this? Is he only it? Like how 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 does he do it? Right? So we don't know that yet, but at least we know the relationship between him and Sakura now. So. Is it a love story? Uh, maybe? Maybe? There's probably some romance involved in it. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Kotaro is infatuated with Sakura, but uh, who knows? Maybe he's just helping her out of being a good friend, right? It's also possible. They could have platonic relationships, but in any case, I'm glad that we at least got some answers in regards to Kotaro. Okay, so that was the entire first half. Now we're going to the second half, the performance part. So, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, because Sakura has such bad luck and because all of the members have bad luck, basically, uh, they managed to perform the concert while it was, while Saga was experiencing the heaviest snow of the, of what they've ever seen before. I think it said it was a historical um, a historical storm, uh, but at least all the characters showed up, right? I I kind of thought at the beginning whether they were going to go the route where uh, because it was snowing so heavily, so a lot of people who wanted to come couldn't make it um, if they wanted to do something like that. But no, everybody showed up because it's a big event apparently, and so all of our familiar characters are there. I'm not gonna go for all of them, but basically um, all the characters from episode two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All the way to right now, biker gang and whatnot—they were all there. Um, so that's that, and then they start performing. Uh, then the place starts falling apart again. They're lucky that they're zombies; otherwise, this would have ended fairly poorly, I should say. Even though that's an understatement, and we should be glad that the entire building didn't fall down. I felt like everybody there was going to be killed, and that would be metal, wouldn't it? And so, in the end, everybody becomes zombies. But no, they didn't do that. Um, a new song. A new song. I thought they were going to... I, I seriously thought they were going to perform at Abandoned Necromancy, the opening, 
as sort of like the final performance. But no, they have a new song uh, called Yumi Gaere. Uh, basically means revitalize, I believe. Um, so the lyrics are pretty much fitting to uh, to what Sakura or actually what the rest of French Shishu were are experiencing, right? You die, but you revitalize yourself, and then you rise up, and then you try and do it again. So, very fitting lyrics. Uh, I love the way that they made the... they structured the performance of the song. So, I wasn't too thrilled with the CGI again, but um, I don't have that big of a problem compared to some other people. Um, it still looks janky and whatnot, but uh, I I can understand why they do it, right? So I'm not going to go into too much on that. I loved how they went into an acapella verse and then basically... Well, actually, first it was the music stopped, the stage fell, and then Kotaru was there clapping, and then everybody was clapping to for a French issue, basically. So then they sang acapella. That scene was pretty epic, especially when all of the other French issue members were had sung their part, and then they were like crouching there and then waiting for Sakura to rise up, basically. Uh, that that was pretty damn epic. It was like waiting for a king to descend or something. <laughs> so even though you know, uh, so yeah, no complaints there. Um, if I had to nitpick, I thought Sakura solo was far too short. Like, she basically just sang, I'll rise up. I thought it was going to be, like, an entire, at least an entire verse or something. Uh, no, sorry, not an entire verse, but at least uh, a, a few sentences, right? That was her solo part. So, and typically, within these kinds of solo parts, you would sing a little bit more. So, it was a little short, but uh, it is what it is. And then, so, <laughs> and then, Good luck, they, they managed to sing it, and then the music comes back at the same time. Epic performance. Um, the song itself is pretty good. Again, I don't quite think it's better than Ad Adabana Necromancy, the opening. And I'm not quite certain if it's as good as Saki's song, but it was epic enough. And in the context, it was pretty well done, right? The lyrics, the beat, and whatnot. I was turning along. Um, I don't have a pen light, so, eh, whatever. But, yeah, great song. Great song. And then, uh, through the performance, Sakura got her memories back, right? So they didn't need to go through the entire, uh, they didn't go, need to go through explaining how she got her memories back. She just got it back by performing. And then, uh, so in the end, happy ending, she's back, everybody's back, and then they go out for another encore. Now that did surprise me. I didn't, I didn't expect them to do two new songs at the same time. Uh, typically, for these kinds of endings, you would have one uh, ending song, uh, I mean one performance song, and then if they do are going to do a second song, it would basically be uh, maybe one of the songs before, except used as an ending song. Uh, but here they showed two new songs, so that was unexpected. Um, the second song is called uh, Flag Wa Hatame Kasero. Basically, it means uh, let the flag fly or let the flag flutter. Basically, um, it's a it's a flag waving song. Basically. Uh, that one, I was more, um, I was more meh on. I definitely like the other, the, the first song better. But it's, it's okay. It's good enough. Um, but yeah. And that concluded the performance. And it would have been also the conclusion to the, uh, series itself, except... They gave it. They did it. They showed the foreshadowing of the next season, right? So I like the way they did it, right? It seems that they maybe they're not maybe entirely convinced yet whether or not they're going to do a second season, but at least they made the story open in a way that they could easily make a second season if they want to. And if the reception is good, and as far as I know, the current reception to Zombieland Saga has been 
um, way past anyone's expectations in, in regards to BD sales and regards to ranking and whatnot. So I think a second season is very feasible now. And so what did we see in the in the foreshadowing, right? So the things that they preferred, they they showed Iron Frill watching Fan Shishu on Abema TV. So that was that was kind of funny as well because Abema TV is basically sort of like the live stream platform for a lot of artists in Japan. And so this means two things, right? One is that Iron Frill realized they have a competitor, right? They have this new there's this new idol group here that uh, is forced to be reckoned with. That's one thing. The second thing is because this is live streamed through Abema TV, this means that Franchushu has officially became uh, known on a le national level. So not quite at you know it's not quite where they were on TV. So lots of people know them, right? Um, this is a digital only platform, so it's a bit more restricted. But at least they're not entirely confined to. Saga now. P now people outside Saga or Kyushu would know of Fran Shushu. So that would open up the second season, if there is one, to allow them to basically have a far bigger scope where they can perform on a national level. Right? So that's one thing. And then the second foreshadowing is in regards to a reporter and how he basically found out about I, about Junko, and about Lily, uh, basically finding, digging up their old photos and comparing them to their current ones. So, again, that's another foreshadowing. I'm kind of disappointed with that uh, this this side character didn't his story didn't really go anywhere. But I guess if they want to, they can freely explore this in the next season should they choose to have one. And I do hope they have one. So that concludes the episode. I mentioned at the beginning of this of this review that they pretty much met or even surpassed my expectations. So, again, breaking it down, going into this episode, I had four things, four things that I wanted this episode to have. One is I wanted them to quickly resolve Sakura's situation, but not make it too serious. I wanted them to still have the humor uh, in within the episode so that it still had some of that Zonu and Saga feel, right? So. They did do. They did have it um, in the first part where they were trying to convince Sakura. It, they sprinkled a lot of humor within there at the same time through the you know through the facial expressions and whatnot, or Tai herself, and it's it wasn't too serious, right? The subject matter itself was serious, but I like that they sprinkled some humor within. Uh, it, re it reminds me a lot of Gintama and where they can. Have some serious subjects and some absurd humor uh, inter interlaced with each other at the same time. The second thing I want was more information on Kotaru. So, um, I, like I just talked to before, they did give some more backstory in regards to him. So that's the second thing. The third part was the performance. Now, I was a little bit disappointed that they did not perform at Havana Necromancy because I love that song and I thought it would have been epic as a final performance. I didn't get that, but we got instead two new songs, right? And one of them I really like, one I'll give it some more time, but so in a way you can say that it also exceeded my expectations in that even though they didn't perform at the band of Necromancy, two new songs, right? So two for the price of one, I can't argue with that. And the fourth and probably the most important thing is any reference to a second season. And yes, we got that. I think there's a pretty good chance that we're going to be seeing more Zondaland Saga in the future. Probably not in, not immediately, like not in the winter of, uh, not, not for the winter season of, uh, of 2018, but maybe in the spring season in April. Um, maybe we can aim for that, or maybe they would ha need half a year to two seasons of time to prepare. In any case, I do believe that this is something that is a possibility, and I'm, I'm happy. I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. So, that was a long review, twenty over 20 minutes. Um, 
But I just wanted to give all the good thing. I just wanted to touch on all the things that I felt this episode did right as a final episode to essentially a a sort of like pilot season of Zombieland Saga. So touched on all the good points. Really glad they made it um, a satisfying conclusion to at least this season of this anime. Um, yeah. So again, like I mentioned, I might eventually uh, make another video to give my final review on the entirety of the anime. But in any case, this has been my review and thoughts on episode 12 of Zombieland Saga. Let me know what you guys think of. Were you satisfied as well? And, well, thank you guys all for coming along for the ride. And, hopefully, I'll see you guys again with the second season. So, this is Mavery of Musings of Mavery. Goodbye.